okay? Uh, at the time that that was done, all right, I had took it upon myself to write the judge. And I wrote him a lifty letter, and I, in that letter, I cited him uh, for uh, destroying Dr. York's presumption of innocence by making that comparison. Because I felt that uh, he would have been more balanced if he would have compared Dr. York to the Catholic sex child priests because they were similarly situated. They were all going through the pretrial process. Uh, they were all detainees. Uh, no one was convicted at that point. Uh, to compare a man who uh, was neither convicted uh, with, uh, with uh, felons, known felons, and a murderer uh, destroyed the presumption of innocence of that uh, particular person because uh, it rendered that person guilty by association. The presumption of innocence, being innocent unto proven guilty, is a legal right that the accused in criminal trials has in many modern nations. It states that no person shall be considered guilty until finally convicted by a court. The burden of proof is thus on the prosecution, which has to convince the court that the accused is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. In case of remaining doubts, the accused is to be acquitted. This idea expressed by the Latin legal maxim, in dubio pro rio. Uh, you ain't got to look at the content of what the judge is saying. Just the, just the mentioning of uh, association of uh, uh, a negative with the positive mm -hmm. renders the positive negative. Okay? So, uh, as the law that you cite has stipulated, all right, that the presumption of innocence is at a higher standard and you cannot limit it you cannot bring it down matter of fact i think i wrote about that in my uh presumption of innocence all right if my memory serves me uh that that was one of the issues i had with the attorneys and i think that in my presumption of innocence i said that when the judge uh did what he did in dr york uh the judge actually he would have been better off just sticking his head out the window and proclaiming Dr. York guilty. And I said that the lawyer should have went to the appellate court on roller skates, okay, and made an issue, a legal issue, out of what the York, uh, the, the judge had, the judge Hicks had done because it substantially affected Dr. York's presumption of innocence because two days after that, Sheriff Seals holds a press conference in Georgia with the Union Recorder, a local newspaper, and explicitly called Dr. York a serial pedophile. Okay, no alleged pedophile, uh, I mean, just pedophile. Okay, again, all right, you got uh, the, uh, the attack on Dr. York's such an innocence by, by the media from the beginning, then followed by the judge, then followed by the sheriff two days later. But the tragedy of that situation, I brought that out in my presumption of innocence, that Dr. York lawyers had never had a counter press conference and had never ringed the sheriff or, or cited the sheriff or the judge or the media for attacking his client's presumption of innocence. Let me pick up on that point, but what's important, particularly in today's society with use of the internet, and pretty much since the O.J. Simpson trial, pretty much, is that the defense has to be coordinated with the individual, and in this case, the organization, in organ mounting an efficient um, trial in the press. You can't just wait for the courtroom to try your case. You got to start trying your case from the time anything comes out in the press negative about your client needs the response to that. If not, the public presumes it's true. Mm -hmm. All right, you say client a pedophile, no response from the defendant, that he must be a pedophile. You follow mm -hmm. me? So what you had is a, is a uh, disconnect between the concern people in the organization and the defense team. Mm -hmm. um, you had uh, um, one of the major problems and I think this actually caused one of the problems. Is you, I think you had a defense 
team at that time that did not truly understand the significance of Dr. York to the black community, okay? And so, you know, they kind of were like flat luster in responding. Some of that was the organization's fault, okay? And we'll get to that farther later. But it is very imperative at the time, like Bundy was saying in like his letter address, at the time the judge said this, and I think that was a, that, you know, by saying that, he was destroying the presumption of innocence, but it's up to the defense team and the organization to get together and say, look, what are we going to do in response? When most of the girls left the land, they came to my father's house, to live in my father's house. Um, Arlene Hamilton, Karima, she moved there. Um, Ida Nicole Lopez, she came too. And that struck me as odd because when she left, her mother was already off the land and she could have lived with her mother. And she, um, she could have lived with her father as well because her father, he, was, he, was, he wasn't even involved with the organization. She, but she was in contact with him. She knew how to get in contact with him. She knew where he lived because ironically, he didn't even really live that far from my home. He lived about 15 minutes away. It struck me as odd that she moved there, but then again, it didn't because I knew that she was involved with my brother.